Okay, since I got a couple questions about um, just basic Cinema 4D stuff, I'm just going to do a really, really quick, easy, like, basic Cinema 4D function um, video. So I'm in here in the Cinema 4D 11 demo again. So one of the first things you want to know how to do is navigate in the viewport. So if you just click around with your left click, or left click, yeah, nothing happens. But on a Mac, if you hold Option and left click, you can like rotate or whatever this is called. It's probably called something like technical, but I don't remember. And then if you press your right mouse button and keep holding Option, you can zoom in and out. And then if you keep holding Option and you press the middle mouse button, that's how you can drag around the viewport. So you just hold down Option, which is Alt on the PC. So hold down Alt and then left click. Um, and just use your three mouse buttons. If you don't have three mouse buttons, you can also hold down one, the, the number one on the keypad and left click to do this, two to do this, and three to do this. So use your three mouse buttons and option or just one, two, the number one, two, and three on your keyboard. And um, <clears throat> to change the actual views, you can either use F5, which will pop into these four views or whatever you have set. And then if you look up here, well, let's just, let's just say when you start the programs, what it looks like. So this is view one, view two, view three, and view four. So let's go back to our main one. Oops. Hey, what the hell? You, oh, wrong key. Okay, so we're in F1, right? So the one, F1, 2, 3, 4 goes along with the view. So if we're in F1, then we can go to F2, F3, F4, and then F5 is all of them. So they're different views, and it tells you what they are. Perspective, so this is where you're animating or working. Top view, right here. Right and front. And you can change any of these views to whatever you want by going to to cameras and changing the type of camera. So perspective is the only one that you can move around with that actual perspective. You know, the other ones are all isometric cameras, which mean they have no perspective, so they're super flat, which is good for modeling and getting things precise. So you can switch between cameras right here. But usually, I only use perspective, left, right, front, back, top. I never use bottom or these. So, but also what you can do is click these buttons up here. So if you're in one view and you want to switch to your alternate views, just press this square up here. And if you don't want to press any keys at all to navigate the camera, you can just left click and hold these down. And they'll do the same three actions. Right? So there's a couple different ways you can do stuff. And with, uh, I think I have these turned, I have them turned off. I think you can go into the preferences and common, no, interface, show shortcuts, yeah, show icons, I don't have that. Um, hmm. Oh yeah, so like see, there's some functions and if you look in here, it'll show you what the shortcut keys are to make those happen, right? So, and another way to access stuff, but this is going to make you confused, but it makes you feel professional. Like, you don't even have to know how to do anything, but you can impress people, like, they don't do 3D. And if you want to frame anything in your scene, just drop something in there, and whatever is selected, then just press the O key, and it zooms in and frames it. That's helpful. I didn't learn that until I was using it for, like, a year. But, so, if you want to look like you know what you're doing, just, like, drop a cube in here, and then hold down the V key, and you know, just hover, hover over these and be like, yeah, check it out. Yup, that's right. I got structure. I got tools. Yup, that's right. So this is like Maya has a hotbox. So this is like Cinema 40's hotbox. But it's pretty useful for modeling. So you hold down the V key. V as in vegetarian face. And then there's some functions if you don't understand why stuff doesn't work, like tutorials. You always want to make stuff editable. And you do that by clicking on, this is a parametric object. So you can edit it segment and stuff, but you want to turn it into uh, something that's editable, a mesh, an editable mesh. So you press the C key, and then now it's editable. So now you can like pull out the polygons and the points, but you can't do that other stuff anymore. So yeah, and then these are the modes right here. So this is the this is the object mode or model selection tool. I don't know, but this is like the one you use all the time, the model tool if you want to move stuff around. And then up here. You have um, move, scale, so if you drag these, it'll scale them on their various axes, which are highlighted. 
um, rotate, which rotates it on the same. You know, you can control the, ax the axis or axes or whatever. Or if you can just use the E key, the R key, and the T key to do the same thing. E is move, R is rotate, T is scale. And then drag these around. If you don't touch it at all, it'll scale all three axes at once, or axes, whatever. So, yeah. And then these are your different modes. Here's a regular move tool mode. Now this looks like the same thing, but it doesn't actually move the object. It just moves the axis of the object. So, and the reason you would do that, like see the axis is in the middle. So then if you rotate it, it rotates, you know, from the center, like it should, I guess. But depending on what you want to do, if you want to make something rotate around a different point. So if I move the axis down here and then rotated it, it's going to rotate off that point. So that's what that's for. It's helpful sometimes. And then this is point mode, if you want to pull points, which is helpful in modeling. What the hell? What the hell? Okay, yeah, so you can pull points. This is edge mode, so you can do the same thing, pull edges. This is poly mode, which I use most of the time, so you can pull polys. Um, you can use your E, R, and T, right? And then just do basic modeling, like to do the easiest type stuff that's at the heart of what I do, because I just do simple stuff. Just bring a cube in, and then hit the C key to make it editable, and go into poly mode, right, with the move tool, and just click on a polygon. And from here, you can press the T key and scale stuff up or down. Um, you can press the E key and move it around if you want. You can press the R key and rotate it if you want. But a really easy way to model stuff is just by extruding and using um, insets or in inner extrudes, but it's easier to see. So you just select any polygon, press the D key, that lets you know that it's going to extrude, and then just drag to the right or left if you want to go in, but to the right. So then you extrude that, and then I'm going to press T and scale it down, and then I'm going to press D and extrude again, and I'm going to press E to go back to the move tool, selection tool, and then I'm going to press D and extrude again. And then I'm going to press the I key and then drag it to the left. So you see what it does, left or right. So it does like this inset thing. I'm going to press D and go inside. Then I'm going to press I and go in a little bit. And then D and come out. So you see what you can do? Press E. So you can do some pretty cool stuff just by using these basic tools. Um, so you can select multiple things. Um, oops. Undo. And then, you know, do stuff like this. I'm pressing the I key, and then I'm pressing D, and I'm extruding it. I'm going to press T and scale them up, and then you can grab them individually. So just using this stuff, you know, this stuff I'm showing you right here, you can make a lot of really cool things. So there's just some basic Cinema 4D. Um, and then one last thing here. Here's how to put a material on something. So you make a new material. Here's your object, double click it, here's your settings, and at first don't even worry about all these, they're too complicated for, you know, just starting off. Just focus on the color. So if you want to make this pink, I'm going to click on this, because um, I've been making a lot of stuff pink lately. So there's your simple materials as a color, and then all you do, can be easier, is just drag it and drop it on your object, and there you go. And when you're making simple stuff like this, it's something I learned a long time ago. I guess every 3D person learns. I don't know exactly why or what, but just bevel everything when you start out. When you're doing round stuff, it doesn't work, but, you know, like stuff with a lot of edges like this, it works. So select, um, go into poly mode, select one polygon, and then select all Apple A or Control, Control A on a PC. And then press V, so you can go into that fancy little box thing and impress your friends. Then go to bevel, let go. And then just click and drag to the right a little bit, and you'll see it's adding edges to it. And then go back to your move tool, and then you can do a little test render. Look, it has like edges or something. So that's how you do that. And then, well, I should show you a couple other simple things. Okay, I will. So you can just click up there and add a light. By default, it's an omni light, which at first you're like, oh, it's cool because it's putting off light at, you know, everywhere in all directions but to get good at lighting you should practice using spotlights which are you know more like real lights so all you do is go up over here to type change it to a spotlight and turn the shadow on and then it's always good to tint lights a little bit the stuff doesn't look good when it just has a pure 
like pure white light. So I always tint lights. Um, the hell, I don't like this color picker. So there's a little tint on the light. And then now this light's selected, but the best way to position lights is to actually look through the light. So this is in line display mode, and I want to change it to Garad or Gaurad or some French stuff that I don't understand. Um, so click on the light that you want, and then go to the display that you want to see through the light at, and go to cameras, link active object. So now you're looking through the light, like this is the light's point of view. And then you just move around and position it, right? And you can see it updating over here. So we can click in here. And then move this light around. You can see what it's doing up here to this model. And then there you have a light. And you can go to objects and scene and put a floor in here. So now if you render it, there'll be a little floor, you know, something to work off. So um, that's some pretty basic stuff. And then what else? You can go and put a put a camera in here and change the perspective if you want like a super wide angle camera 18 millimeters is like a wide camera and then nothing happened because you have to, just like you had to choose a light over here to look through you have to choose to look through the camera so go to cameras then go to scene cameras and then if you rename it it'll have the name but it's right here so now we're looking through that camera and see how it's like distort well it's distorted like a super wide angle lens right so we can do that and then um, do a test render. So that's how to make a basic thing and texture it. And then to render it out, you click, well, you can't render in the demo, but you click over here and um, you click output, you tell it how big you want it, whatever, and how many frames, all your frames, and then you save it and you tell it the format, whatever. We can't do that in the demo, but if you have the full version or another version, that's where your controls are. So yeah, there's a little starter thing. There's all this other cool stuff in here too, but if, I, if you want me to do some more of these, if these are helping anybody, let me know, I'll make more. But um, this is just basic stuff for you to get started. Okay, I'm back to work, um, bye.